In this video, I'm going to show you how we can do Duhamel integration easily using a graphing calculator. So I'm going to try example 6.1, which is a single degree of freedom system with a given mass, which is the weight divided by G and a given stiffness. And I'm going to do 5% damping as stated later on in my notes, which is on page 17, All right? And on the right-hand side here, I have um, just a generic file containing typical things that I usually would input, but they are all commented out, so uh, nothing's really defined. So I start with a clear AZ command to clear all the variables. And since I'm going to use variable tau in my Duhamel integrations, I better clear that variable as well. And uh, let me just uh, arrow up and remove the comment sign. And these are indeed the numbers that I'm gonna use for this problem. Uh, there are two uh, typical times, T1, 0.025 and T2 being 0.05 seconds. And the amplitude of the force being input is um, this much. In newtons and my weight is this number uh, the given weight of the water tank divided into g and the stiffness is in newton per meter value so i enter these constants and then usually i would proceed to my calculation of the natural frequency which is square root k over m and i provide the damping ratio which is five percent in this case and I also calculate the damped frequency, which will go into my Duhamel integra integration formula. So it is um, some constant times uh, omega naught. So I define all these things and I'm reminded here that we need to prepare the loading expressions before we use Duhamel integration because usually it takes place um, piece by piece. So in the first region, I call that region one, uh, and I'm gonna call my forcing P1. That will be just a increasing linear function of time. Uh, but be careful here, we always just use tau. So it is a P naught times tau, my variable over T1. And my second piece of force is valid from T1 to T2. And uh, I just need to change things a bit. So P2 is going to be uh, P naught times, okay, it starts from some maximum and it decreases gradually. So here, what I should put is, um, okay, let's think about it. Uh, when T goes to T2, it, it all disappears. So I should have, um, the elapsed time, which is tau minus T1 over T2 minus T1. Okay, you can check that P2 when T is equal to, okay, that's how you use uh, the substitution. You can also find it here. Okay, so let's substitute tau equals T1. I should get that. P naught, when tau is equal to T2, it disappears. All right, so now we are ready to apply the Hamo integration. So let's go up and highlight that formula. And I know that my response will need to be found piece by piece. First, we find it in region one, where the integral will have to go from zero to some symbolic T, which is understood to be under T1. So let me call that response X1 for region one use. It will go from zero to T, a general time that's under T1. And of course I need to integrate with a P1 inside the integrand. So that's my response. And now let me just um, think about what needs to be done for the response in region two. Well, I'm gonna to have to integrate from zero to T1, and then from T1 
to some time t symbolically uh, using a different expression for the loading p. So there will be two pieces that look almost identical. So let me just copy the first piece, copy it and paste it here. So let's be careful. First of all, this is for region two. So let me change the variable name <coughs> to be assigned as um, x2. So first I'm gonna integrate from zero to uh, t1 that finishes the integral that involves p1. And then in the second integral, I'm going to start from t1 and then go up to some symbolic t, which is understood to be within region two. And of course I need to put a p2 here. It's a different function that's decreasing. So that completes the integration. I press enter and there's the result. And let's not forget that we still need the response in region three, uh, which just looks very similar to the above expression, except that in the second piece, you will need to finish your integration all the way out here at T2. And that's it because out here in region three, P is zero. So we don't need to integrate that regardless of uh, whatever time you're looking for the response at. Okay, it's out here in region three. So let's call that X three. So that finishes all the Duhamo integration. Let's put the three responses together in one expression <coughs> using a conditional statement. So let that result be called x123. It will be colon equal to, um, well, then we need some conditional statement which can be invoked by the when command. So first of all, if time is negative, I do not have any vibration because the force hasn't started yet. So give me a zero, okay? So that's how you use the when function. When the condition is true, give me this output. Otherwise, give me something else when the condition is false. Well, if it's not negative time, then we need to check another thing. Is the time under T1 so that we know it's in region one. So if the time is less than T1, then I know I need to use X1 as my answer for the vibration. If that's not true either, then we may be out here in region two. So we're gonna check further when T is less than T2, then I know X2 is the correct answer to use. Otherwise, it must be out here in region three somewhere. The force has already disappeared. So we use X3 in that case, All right? So here is a complete answer that depends on T, it will give you the correct function of T as the response. Okay, uh, you can use control seven to go to the beginning of that line. So uh, let's plot this thing. And also because the response is in meters, let's uh, convert it to millimeters. So let me call that plotting variable, I'll call it X plots underscore mm. So that will be assigned the following. Okay, it will be 1000 times my x123. But we know that on this calculator, it plots functions of x rather than t. So let me just change or I'll, I'll rewrite all the t symbols as an x. All right, so now let us uh, go to a plotting page. Uh, so if you're doing this on a handheld, just document insert a graph. And let me just enter my plotting variable. It's called uh, X plot mm. All right, so we do have some vibration and we can use a uh, zoom fit, for example, and uh, followed by zoom box, let's say, to see it more clearly. All right, zoom out a bit. 
And we are going to uh, use the analyze graph command to take a look at the maximum value. So menu analyze graph maximum, give it a lower bound and an upper bound. So we see the maximum happens at approximately 0.076 seconds at about 7.2 millimeters. Let's also check the minimum deflection here. So the absolute value is about 6.2 millimeters. Okay, so that's it. And uh, we spent about just 10 minutes to solve this Duhamel integration problem. And uh, thank you for watching.